In this video, I'm going to tell you all about the Ox Metal CNC Router Mill. So, what are some of the features of the Ox Metal? Well, before we get into that, if you've done any research because you're curious about building a open source CNC router mill, you've probably come across a build called the Ox Machine. Now, as the name would suggest, this is based off it. However, to differentiate the original design to my design, I've tagged on the name Metal to the end to avoid any confusion. Fundamentally, one of the biggest differences between the original design and the Ox Metal is the use of 8mm lead screw on all the axes. This has a couple main advantages. One, effectively you're gearing down the stepper motors. This results in a better holding torque and more precise movement. And two, results in much stiffer axes when compared to using GT3 belt, which is a rubber belt reinforced with fiberglass. When you're using GT3 belt and cutting some pretty heavy materials such as very hard wood or things like aluminium, uh, this can result in the axes jarring uh, as the belt isn't perfectly solid and rigid to hold the axe in place. The use of lead screw eliminates a lot of this. The bed dimensions of the ox metal are 705mm wide and 1160mm long and the travel on all the axes for the z-axis is 60mm, for the x-axis is 610mm and on the y-axis is 780mm. The aux metal also features minimum and maximum travel limit switches. These can be used in a number of ways but we'll only go over a couple in this video. One of the most useful ways that I can think of for travel limit switches is precise homing of the machine. This means that in the event of a power cut, uh, once the power comes back on, rather than throwing out the material you were cutting, you can home the machine, reinitiate the cut, and in theory, and that is a key word, in theory, the machine will carry on doing all the cuts as if nothing ever happened because it knows exactly where all the axes are. The Ox Metal also features cable chains for better cable management. We've got two cable chains on this version. We've got one on the Y axis and one on the back of the X axis. The Ox Metal features quite a number of 3D printed components. Now, if you don't have a 3D printer, there are plenty of services out there to get these printed for you. Um, if you do print them yourself or whether you get someone to print them for you, I do recommend using some sort of copolyester filament for the plastic. Uh, copolyester plastics are excellent on use for machines like this as they're very strong in all the directions and also quite temperature resistant along with being fairly chemical resistant as well. The Ox Metal features an 18mm plywood base with a sheet of 5mm MDF on top as a wasteboard so that once it's all messed up, been cut through, had spills on it, whatever, you can simply unbolt it, put a new sheet of MDF on top and your plywood is mint just like new. The plywood also acts as an integral part of the chassis to help strengthen and stiffen all the axes. The Ox Metal features NEMA 23 stepper motors, though this is nothing groundbreaking by any means, um, these NEMA 23 stepper motors are a good choice over NEMA 17 stepper motors as they have much higher holding torque and also give the Ox Metal the ability to machine aluminium. For my own build, I ended up going with a Makita quarter inch router which has a 65mm base. However, if you don't use this motor, that is just fine. You can pretty much use any motor that you'd like as long as you find a way of bolting it to the V-slot on the Z-axis, which is fairly simple to do. So we're going to take a look at the Ox Metal in action here. So I've got a 6mm slot milling bit in my Makita router here and we're just going to be routing out a simple hexagon shape into this bit of wood. Now this wood is called Totara and it is a native wood to New Zealand. Very hard. I'm going to speed up the clip here. Um, but we're not going to go over the wood too much because we all know everybody really wants to see this thing cut some aluminium. So, same bit as before. 
Now all the settings and feed rates are rather slow and modest because this is just some of the first few cuts I've ever done in aluminium with this machine. So it takes a few cuts to dial in all the settings. And you can just see me there spraying on some WD-40 as a cutting lubricant to not only lubricate the bit but also it helps prevent aluminium clogging the flutes on the milling bit as well. So we're going to speed up the clip to get through this part. Now each pass is taking off one tenth of a millimetre which is again rather modest but for the reasons mentioned before we're going to start at that rate. And I do have plans to add a mister to this to lubricate the bit and also uh, might look at putting on a vacuum nozzle to suck up all the shavings as well. Here's a close look at the hex shape we were machining out. It's got very defined edges. There's no jitter or anything in the cut. And I did stop this before it passed all the way through the metal as this was only a test cut so I didn't bother to design tabs to stop the hex from breaking out when the mill passed all the way through the metal. But there you have it. This, the ox metal is able to machine aluminium. So if you'd like to know how to build the ox metal, um, there'll be a video link up here. It'll take you to a video which will explain the entire build in great detail and also it'll have links to all the parts so that you can easily purchase these yourself. So if you found this video helpful, it'd be tremendous if you give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, you'll probably like lots of my other videos, so go check those out. And also consider subscribing. It helps the channel out, helps me make videos, so that you guys can hopefully enjoy them. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you next one. Bye for now.